Hey everybody! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited to be back this week with a new video. I hope you guys enjoyed my last week's video and if you haven't had a chance to watch it, I'm gonna put it somewhere over here on the screen. So today, what we are going to talk about is the Gorilla Glue Saga. Yeah, I know you guys are thinking this is a little late in the news cycle. I know, but I had to gather my thoughts so I could give them to you guys and make an interesting video. So let's recap the whole Gorilla Glue Saga. So if you don't know, you can kind of basically get a rundown. And if you know, just a good refresher. Okay, so insert the first video here. Hey y'all, for those of y'all that know me know my hair has been like this for about a month now. It's not by choice. No, it's not by choice. When I do my hair, I like to, you know, finish it off with the little got to be glue spray. You know, just to keep it in place. Well, I didn't have any more got to be glue spray, so I used this. Gorilla glue spray. Bad, bad, bad idea. Y'all, look. My hair, it don't move. You hear what I'm telling you? It don't move. I've washed my hair 15 times. And it don't move. Stiff wear. Woo! My hair. So I'm going to tell y'all like this. If you ever, ever run out of got to be glue spray... Don't ever, ever use this unless you want your hair to be like that. For the first video explains how she used Gorilla Glue on her hair. She thought it was going to like slick her hair back, you know, give her clean edges, have her hair laid. Um, and it didn't work out because of the fact she tried to wash it out. And one thing about Gorilla Glue is that once you put water on it, it hardens even more. It's water resistant. And so she washed, tried to wash her hair like 15 times. And nothing happened and then from there like a few days after she went to the hospital because she couldn't get the glue out of her hair and they gave her acetone which should help break down the glue but it wasn't working um, because of the fact that it can be really harsh on her hair and really harsh on her and her scalp and so thank goodness a plastic surgeon you know reached out to her and said hey I'll do this for free and will break down the solvent of the glue and hopefully you can salvage your hair. And so she was able to salvage some of her hair and basically crisis was averted. But everybody was up in arms. Twitter was up in arms. Let me insert some of my favorite screenshots. Yeah, they were like really, really funny and like some of them were apathetic, like they didn't seem to sympathize or empathize with this girl. And some of them were like, hey, let's be a little bit more understanding. People were very apathetic to her. And they were like, it's very obvious what Gorilla Glue is meant for. And it's not meant for your hair. How could you be so dumb to do this and like not understand the basics of what a glue is? Maybe you meant Gorilla Glue snot but even then you should have read and all this other stuff and they were just kind of mean um and no one really got down to the issue of why why did tessica feel the need to have her hair laid to the point that like it couldn't move laid to the point where no one could question whether or not her hair was laid and her edges were laid why did it get to this point and how did it get to this point we need to answer those questions and that's why i'm talking about the the upkeep and the trauma of black beauty standards. It's something that we've all experienced. From staying up 6 to 12 hours to get your hair braided down, knowing that after it's braided down it's going to hurt the first couple of nights, your brain is maybe thumping and it may be a little tight on your brain and on your head, to you know having your mother hot comb and silk press your hair so that you could have hair that you know is acceptable you know acceptable to the society for us our hair is a statement of power but by society it's unruly it's nappy it's kinky it's needs to be tamed and how did we get to this point in the 1700s the tinon law was enacted which required creole women to wear a tinon or a scarf to cover their hair and to also signify that they weren't free and that they were slaves. This was because in Louisiana, um, these women would have really elaborate updos 
and to combat them getting any type of attention and to put them in their place, they created this law. This attitude that black hair needed to be hid unless it was tamed or that it needed to be tamed in any way was created. And obviously it has its roots to slavery. Even in other parts of the country when slavery was alive and rampant, house slaves would try and emulate their hair to their master's wives. But you know, the outside slaves would have their hair more um, unruly, if you would say. And this was also a way to keep this designation between a house slave and, you know, the outside slave. And so through slavery, the attitude towards black hair was negative. And people thought that it wasn't good hair, that it was, it needed to be straightened to be nice. And obviously throughout history, because of slavery and other things, the Eurocentric standard for beauty was set and carried out in black women were always compared to it. Not only black women, obviously, but in the sense we're talking about black women. By the end of the 19th century, the hot comb was invented and then popularized by Madam C.J. Walker. And this hot comb was used to tame natural hair, to tame black hair. And by the mid-1920s, straight hair signified that you were in the middle class. And anything that wasn't straight obviously meant that you were poor, and it designated your your status, which would usually be lower class. And then from there, we moved into this reclaiming of our hair during the 1960s and 1970s. With the popularization of the Black Panther Party, women such as Angela Davis used their fro as a political tool. The Afro signified rebellion against the white Eurocentric beauty standards, but also as a signal to black power, you know, that our hair is powerful just as much as our voices. A 1972 study in St. Louis saw that there was a 90% uptick in men wearing afros and a 40% uptick of black women wearing their natural hair throughout the city of St. Louis. By the 1980s and 1990s, permed hair had become popularized and this came back to taming our hair. So while we had, so while we had this rebellion against these Eurocentric beauty standards, eventually it seeped back in. Also during that cultural era, it was kind of like civil rights movement, um, the protests against Vietnam. It all made sense to have this upheaval and turmoil. But in the 1980s and 1990s, it was kind of more of this serene, like. And not serene for everybody, obviously, but it was kind of more of this, this calmness that followed the years of civil disobedience and protest. You can see it, like I said, in the 70s, 60s and 70s, the Afro was popularized to signify black power. But by the 1980s and 1990s, everybody was kind of just thinking, we're done, racism is over, and they kind of went back to status quo. And so perms became more popular. And perms encourage black women to alter the texture of their hair, obviously, for it to be more palatable for society. At the same time, cornrows and braids were being popularized. So we were at this weird point where we were loving our hair, like, obviously through braids and extensions, braiding extensions such as um, box braids and stuff, but also we were trying to fit the Eurocentric beauty standard. And obviously, one eventually went over. By 2000s, we had the second coming of the natural hair movement. People started embracing their natural hair, 2000s, 2010s really. And we got to this point where we we're like, you know what, our hair is beautiful. The natural hair industry is a $2.5 billion industry every year because black women are saying, hey, our natural hair is beautiful. And the natural hair movement, this movement was really to embrace hair that had not been embraced throughout history which was type four hair. And during this time, the use of relaxers fell 30.8% from 2011 to 2016, and even suggest that by 2020, it would fall even more. Even throughout all of this progress, hair discrimination still exists, and the attitude towards kinky hair has not changed because it is still seen as unruly, unkept, unprofessional, and women, specifically black women who wear their natural hair, are less likely to be hired if they wear in its natural state. 
and there are many black women, including you, if you're a black woman watching this video, that you have had people be surprised when you take your braids out or take your weave out. You know, they're just like, ooh, can I touch it? I've never seen hair like that before. And it takes you back. You're just like, girl. Um, that doesn't make no sense. My man. No, first of all, you can't touch my hair. And second, and second, why do you feel the need to treat me as though I am a zoo animal? Something to touch and to prod and to poke because of my hair. So the attitudes really haven't changed. And we have this standard while we say, and while I'm talking about, you know, standards that have been imposed on us, because of this imposition of standards, we, ha we as a community have created a standard for black women to have their hair hot combed and soap pressed and and edges laid and hair slayed and so when your hair looks like this like look at me my edges are not laid you kind of feel insecure you see everybody else and you're just like my 4c hair won't do that even now me coming on the screen was an act of rebellion against these beauty standards because there are times where I wouldn't leave my house or there are times where I felt insecure because the fact that my edges weren't laid, my hair wasn't slayed to the gods, it was kind of unruly, it didn't fit the standard of what everybody wanted and that sucks. And we all feel the need to fit this standard. Wearing wigs, making sure that you can't see the lace, making sure that we say lace wear, you know, HD laces, all this stuff and it's just like why do we put ourselves through this? And thinking about hair discrimination, there was a black boy who was on the wrestling team and he was at a wrestling match and they said that his hair didn't meet the standard that they wanted and so they cut it. They didn't take him anywhere private, they did it in front of everybody at that match. There are multiple instances throughout the world where black girls have been discriminated against their hair. where they've been kicked out of school or you know kicked out of the classroom because their hair didn't fit the standard of what that school wanted even though they said they wanted natural hair they just didn't mean our hair there was even this post on twitter where this black woman who was a news anchor she tweeted that she finally felt confident for the first time to wear her natural hair to work and because of instances like this it wasn't far off to think i can understand why tessica felt this way I can understand why she reached for the Gorilla Glue. It's because there's this standard and there's this pressure on us to always have our hair to look good. It's okay to walk out with your hair a little unkempt. It's okay to have a silk bonnet on when you go outside. It's okay to not have your hair slayed all the time. Because it's exhausting having to keep up with this standard. I know for myself, I'm exhausted. But we put ourselves through it every single day. And we feel like we have to do this but in reality we don't and the question is who are we trying to prove this to as black women we are beautiful regardless of the fact that our edges are laid and our hair is slayed i think i'm pretty beautiful right now even with my braids not looking you know tight and shiny and new i think i'm beautiful and i hope that you would too the standard of black beauty has become something that I don't think it should be. It's become this comparison and it all really boils down to Eurocentric beauty standards. And that's what we're trying to compete with. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy to unlearn, but it's important to say, hey, I don't think I need to do this anymore. I don't feel the need to have to compete and maintain my hair at all times my hair may be unruly to you but it's beautiful to me that's how I feel I don't know about you guys but I've gone to this point where first because I could never really lay my edges but I learned to accept that and I was like you know what I'm gonna love my hair in all of its stages like when it's in a fro when it looks like this after learning to braid my hair for the first time this is the result of two weeks because I'm learning but that's okay like it doesn't need to be perfect all the time and it won't be you know we all have felt this way when we were messing with our natural hair like doing a wash day in it not turning out successful and being upset you know crying because 
you know, a style that we did, maybe Bantu knots or twist outs, didn't turn out the way that we wanted. And sometimes I wonder, why are we so upset at ourselves? Our hair is beautiful regardless. And I think as black people, we forget that our hair is a part of our identity. And so if we think our hair is not beautiful, then in some ways we are saying we are not beautiful. And we've all started to learn to accept our natural hair. So why are we judge someone for trying to keep up with a beauty standard that is hard to maintain? Tessica is a victim here. We are all victims here. The trauma of black beauty standards has gotten to all of us. It's seeped into everything. Where a black girl makes snide comments if you don't have your hair in a certain way. Where a white person feels that they have the right to tell you, hey, your hair's not lit like X, Y, and Z. The person you're dating feels the right to tell you how to manage your hair and how they want you to look. It's because we've given them this power because we've put it on ourselves to say, you know, I don't think my hair is beautiful, when in fact it is. And I don't know about you, but I, for one, am tired of living up to a standard that is so impossible to chase and to keep. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it made sense. I'm going to put the links of everything that I've used to create this video in the description. I hope you guys take the time to read them because I think they are very insightful. And I hope that, you know, you give yourself a little break once in a while. Your hair, no matter what it looks like right now as you're watching this, is beautiful. And if someone doesn't think that, who cares? I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you guys watch all my past videos. And if you guys have anything to say in the comments, I would love to read them. I would love to see and hear your thoughts about it. I would love to hear your thoughts about this video and, you know, the whole Gorilla Glue saga and things that you've seen and heard about your hair or about other people's hair that, you know, broke you the wrong way. Anything. Like, I am down to hear it in the comments. I hope you guys have a really, really good day and I will see you guys next week.